we have extended the child tax credit. And in, that, in so doing, in the first year, reduced black child poverty by almost 40%. Oh. Cannot get a Republican to help us extend it beyond. But these are some of the things that we have been doing, understanding the generational impact, not to mention the work that we need to do that is about foreign policy. I have met with, I don't know, probably at least two, two dozen foreign leaders, prime ministers, presidents. Um, I just recently convened the Caribbean prime ministers and presidents around what we should do as the United States, seeing them as our neighbors in the Western Hemisphere and giving appropriate support there. And so we have to multitask, looking at what we need to do domestically, what we need to do to bring down the cost of gas, uh, what, right? Uh, uh, right? I seen a meme the other day that said, me Googling online how to make gas at home. Okay? Ooh, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do that. Hilarious. <laughs> But it's true. I mean, there's so many things, but you guys have been has been working. And I know some of the stuff is going to be a layover effect, right? Just like we're seeing layover effect from the last administration, a lot of the things you guys are doing now are going to be immediate, but some things we're going to see as time goes, and we appreciate you for putting that work in. I want to take it back to something that we talked about also in D.C., where, you know, I knew that you were from the Bay, but what was interesting to learn was that you grew up around a lot of civil rights leaders because your parents' involvement with the civil rights movement. Yeah. Um, and I want to ask you because, like I was saying earlier, you know, in the millennial generation, we've just seen so many people lie to us. We've seen so many things unfortunate happen, like Roe versus Wade being overturned. And we take it very personally, where it, it, it does tend to bring on this apathy. But when I do think back to the generations before me, I think about the civil rights movement, I'm like, wow. They were up against a lot of even more daunting realities, maybe even the ones that we're facing now. Not to compare, but like you said, there's always a lot going on. Yeah. So you being around those kinds of people, what were some of the ways that they were able to reinvigorate themselves? Or even more so, how did they mobilize, right? Because I don't want to be that person that just looks at my government and says, oh, oh what are you doing? Yes, I, there's accountability that needs to be had, but I want accountability for myself as well. I want to know what I can do. You know what I'm saying? What can I do uh, to, to get out there and encourage my peers, encourage myself, and make sure that I'm being an active member in my, in my society? First and foremost, and I don't need to say it to you, Kiki, because you really do use your voice in such an extraordinary way. Oh, no, you really do. You Thank really you. do. Thank you so much. You, you just, you, you, you have the courage to speak out, and you're not concerned about putting your finger in the air to see if it's popular. You speak truth, and I really appreciate, and respect, and admire that. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to our channel so you'll be sure to see similar videos from Blaze TV with the added bonus of signaling YouTube that your voice and opinion still matters. And if you're looking for more great conservative content, check out one of the two videos suggested here.